Hi, uh, some of you actually already know me, so I'll get right to the point about Map Libre. All right, so when you have legal changes or how to become an agent of chaos, uh, you're actually in luck. Um, I consider myself a very chaotic person and I'll teach you how to be one. So first you need to define goals. Let's say you want a drink with rum, cola, and lime, as you could have seen yesterday. I was surprised myself to, see, to find my map Libre on the menu. Anyway, so this is our goal. So first step is you notice that the license has changed. In other words, from the open source license of Mapbox, amazing Mapbox software, you all of a sudden find yourself in a proprietary land. So what do you do? Well, you fork it, you rebrand it, and you do that first by tweeting. Make sure you get a response from the Mapbox CEO like within the first few minutes, otherwise like, it doesn't count. And then you gather community around it and you end up with Map Libre, the organization. So what are we? What is Map Libre? Map Libre is a nonprofit. It's an organization dedicated to maintaining software and developing software and tools. It's open source licensed. It supports all, everything pretty much from bits to pixels, and I'll get to that in a second. We accept donations. We exist because there's uh, an amazing community, uh, dedicated developers, hobby developers, large corporations, everyone together, we're building this amazing software. So where are we now? We have a number of amazing projects. The flagship projects are Map Libre Web, which most of you are probably already familiar with. And that project recently achieved almost half a million downloads a week. I was surprised myself. Someone's CI broke, clearly. Um, Map Libre Native, I have no idea how many times it gets downloaded, to be honest. I'm sure there's some statistics somewhere. Uh, Bart will probably help me find it someday. Um, we have Martin, the tile server, uh, to help serve these tiles and support all the edge cases and use cases of Map Libre. We have experimental projects like Map Libre RS, which tries to reunite all the code bases between the web and the native into one land. Not working too well so far, but you know we're trying. I mean, if we're not trying, then we might as well close the shop. And we have other fun research projects like uh, MLT, the, the new tile format that I'll get to, thanks to Marcus, who is like right there. Um, so moving on, we have open, so open governance. Every year we get re-elected board, you know, things get really stale if government stays in power for too long. Uh, we have a technical steering committee, which does the same thing, but for, for the technical aspects. We have amazing sponsors who really believed in us from day one and supported our efforts. And I really want to thank them for that. So divisions, am I going too fast? I mean, I have the whole half an hour. I was, last time I was presenting this whole stack in five minutes and that was like a very interesting experience, I must say. So drawing just part of the picture. So our main efforts. We want to support new technology. Metal is done. I should actually probably remove this because this is no longer an effort, it's actually an achieved thing. Next step is Vulkan. Ability to have Vulkan support on native platforms. Vulkan is another GPU, basically, a mechanism of talking to a GPU. And it's much more efficient in a number of use cases and more controllable. We have ability to do 3D terrains, hill shading. Globe view is almost there. I'll show you some pictures. Yeah, we're, you're all here for pictures, I know. Uh, documentation. Writing systems. Just recently I found out that there is this really cool effort where you can generate fonts for like really complex scripting systems like uh, Burmese, where uh, each next character basically morphs the previous character into the new shape. And for that, you need really complicated software client side. And yet there is a workaround, turns out, that is quite ingenious that we might be able to support. There is 
performance. Everyone wants performance. I mean, it's pretty much you know, the reason Map Libre is used so much is because it's one of the fastest, if not the fastest, I think, uh, stack, open source stack out there. Um, lots of research projects, many other things. Oh, we want projections too. I mean, it's a, one of those, we keep talking about it, no one's doing anything. But I mean, we do want projection support. So state of map Libre. Sky support, we, we are actually getting there, like we can do sky color and horizon color and fog color and blend it all together and make it really uh, out of this world looking. But I don't know, I like it. A globe is almost there. We can actually turn web mercator tiles into spherical things. I mean, it's pretty accurate, I would say. I mean, not too much distortion, even though web mercator is awesome at that. So fundamentally, well, the web aspect of MapLibre JLJS is we got the atmosphere supporting, we got styling and functionality improvements in last year, we got API, major API refactorings. I mean, a lot of fun things are happening. We even got hill shading, but the, although that's been done for a little bit of like some time ago, but it looks cool. I just like this video. That's, that's the only reason I'm keeping it here. Um, oops. Yeah, it works. MapLibre native. That's another project that actually gets much more investment from large corporations because MapLibre native runs on the apps. It's actually a very interesting situation. On one hand, the web version of MapLibre is very much used by hobbyists, small shops, small companies, because it's so much easier to get started with. I mean, web, the whole JavaScript, even though we really love that language, it's really very easy to get started with. Native part of MapLibre, on the other hand, is much harder to work with because you need, well, I mean, you, you're writing apps for Android, iOS, or nat native platform, it's, it's, it requires more effort. But larger corporations tend to use that in their apps and then it gets disseminated to billions of people. You know, like when Facebook or Amazon or Microsoft is using it in their apps, it gets shipped everywhere. So we end up with more users, users, the end users of the native, but many more community members and developer participations in the web world. So that's a very interesting situation. So MapLibre native, we got metal support for iOS, yay. Um, we got, uh, a big companies shipping it in the apps and we're about to start shipping. Fully automated the release process, all the usual CI stuff. And we started working on Vulkan, as I said before. We got Martin, it's my per personal pa uh, favorite because I spend most of my volunteer time on Martin uh, and maintaining it. So it's a giant tile server that has all sorts of features specially tailored for MapLibre. It uh, supports, tile it's basically a tile generator and tile server from po multiple Postgres connections, uh, PM tiles, MB tiles, supports sprites, supports font generations, SDF uh, support, everything you need for MapLibre basically. So we have even Lambda support recently added, so you can just put Martin as a binary blob into directly from release pages page to into an AWS Lambda and it works. You can do bulk tile generation using Martin. Basically all the Martin supported tile sources, but you can just run Martin CP from a command line and it generates a section of the world or the whole world actually for all that matters in a similar fashion to tile life copy if you've ever used that, but using all the sources supported by Martin into an MB tiles file. We can do MB tiles manipulation, like copy section of it, so some tiles, compare them, make even patches. It's actually uh, a very useful use case for offline use, uh, offline map use. For example, you send them a giant MB tiles file, like 100 gigs, and then you just want to send them the updates, just the tiles that changed, or just the binary diff of the tiles that changed, which is like a tiny fraction of the tiles. So you can have like a, just a few megabytes patch 
sent to the client and updated there. We had all sorts of other little cool projects. One of them is Macro uh, Microsoft that mapped me. Well, this is not a project, it's just an exciting news that Microsoft and MapMe became silver sponsors, and Microsoft and Stamen began working on Map Libre tile format. That's another thing I will mention in a bit. How am I doing on time? Do I have a clock here? So. Anyway, it's fine. I need fire behind me. It's fine. All right, so Maputnik joined onboarded Map Libre project, so now you, we have an editor. Oh my God, you can actually style things in a more or less organized fashion. Ferrostar has been launched, it's like a plug-in for, oh, it does speak Korean. So a navigation plug-in on top of Map Libre native, written in Rust, I love Rust, um, that allows people to navigate, all right. There we go. Okay, so what's next? Vulkan support. Map Libre native uh, portion. MLT is the new format that I'm spending quite a lot of my effort on and uh, led by Marcus and uh, Stamen to implement it. And maybe I'll en even mention something like Photoshop styled maps. Something like watercolor by Stamen. Has anyone seen this map before? It's a very, very old map, written, uh, done with Maputnik, uh, Mapnik, Maputnik, no, not, wait, Mapnik, yeah, Mapnik, I think, was the one that introduced that. It's like Photoshop-like image process, post-processing after map generation that creates really beautiful effects. Um, this map was actually added to Smithsonian. That's, that's a big deal, you know? And well, uh, there is now a, like a, an idea of how to add this to Map Libre, and we need volunteers and sponsors to implement and or donate to it, and we'll have these type of effects in Map Libre. Well, again, now I'm really fishing for future features. So what's in MVT? So Marcus right there, yeah. Like, he does look like his picture, unlike myself. Um, so. Map Libre tile format. There is a way to optimize those MVTs. We can get them up to six times smaller, especially when using open map tiles. If you use Bing maps, which is also, by the way, uses Map Libre, uh, the gains are not as big, but still significant. It's columnar oriented, with each column being encoded completely separately. So you can have a lot of optimizations because you put all your names in one column, all your speed limits in another column, and because it's all speed limits one after another, you can actually have integer optimization to store them. So it's the, the, the size of the tile becomes really small. It's like has all these really cool things like zero copy direct to GPU, uh, CMD optimized encoding. I mean, every keyword you can find in the resume of some really um, cool company it does that. So it could even do pre-tessellated data. Because it turns out that, for example, Map Libre Native spends up to 90% of the CPU time of parsing a tile pre-tessellating oh, sorry, tessellating for low zoom levels. Because you know, when you kind of zoom out, there's all these areas like land use. They're fairly complicated polygons, and they need to be tessellated for Map Libre to actually draw them because um, silly GPU only uses triangles. And that tessellation step is required. Well, why don't we do it once for everyone on the server side and send the pre tessellated data to the client and skip the 90% of the CPU tessellation on the client? And the increase in tile size is actually negligible especially considering of all the gains we got from the overall restructuring of MVT. Plus we got supports for, support for all the additional tile fields, formats, uh, types. So my favorite is M value. Actually Overture Maps is using already that kind of functionality where you have a single geometry, like let's say a road, 
and that road has width. Well, this width changes as you go through the road. So at each vertice, you can have a different value. Sometimes some Postgres calls it M value for some reason, um, measurement value, I guess. But you can have multiple of these. What about timestamp? At which point your car drove through each of these vertices? Right. And you, but you can have all these measurements. Uh, it's a columnar format, so this kind of looks like that. I stole it from his presentation. And we can have all these new use cases. Elevations, metadata, timestamps, like all the, uh, maybe even abandoned uh, web mercator f s coordinate system. We can probably even do that. One of the main points here is that we can, since we have access to everything from bits to pixels. We have the tile generation friends, like Planetire is, uh, works with us very closely in many other systems. We can generate new Postgres extensions to generate this format. We have Martin to serve the tiles in the new format with all the new features, pretestulation, like do all that additional work. We have MapLibre native and web to actually render it. So we have the whole stack where we can introduce these changes and make it all happen. So join us at maplibre.org or come to Slack and thank you so much. Thank you. And now time for questions. Hello, thank you for the good presentation. Um, my question is, so you didn't mention any of the uh, OGC standard. Uh, so is there the plan, for example, to support OGC API tiles or, uh, yeah? Pull requests, welcome. <laughs> okay, but so, so it's, I yeah. mean, I've heard of OGC. I am not against it. I would love MapLibre and Matt Martin and, many th and all the other parts of the stack to support more of it. Because I love standards, especially how many there are. Um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Everyone knows that, but seriously. We do want more standard support. We would love to have that added. There, are some exp uh, there has been some calls to add these kind of functionality to the stack. We. I, the, the, the way I see MapLibre, the organization, is especially coordinators, facilitators, um, I don't know, crisis managers. We are standing in between of all these big and small companies and individuals who can want to contribute new functionality. We will try to help you to make it happen. We do not have enough budget to basically have major new functionality added unless it's someone's volunteer and or paid effort. Help us make it happen. Thank you. Next. You do realize I'm the last thing that stands between you and lunch, right? <laughs> um, as things progress, like how much do you care about uh, parity with the Mapbox GL API? Oh, tough one. Hey, you don't work for Mapbox, do you? No, <laughs> I have no. If it like, I have no relation to Mapbox. So, um, Mapbox GeoJS has been modifying their API. Probably, I haven't been looking at it in a direction that suits their use cases and their services. So does MapLibre, based on the feedback of our sponsors of our donors, of our contributors, of the individuals. It is natural that we're diverging paths. We do not even look, to be honest, well, most of us, at Mapbox API changes, because unless there is a really significant reason to keep things in sync, it, we do not set this as our goal. At the same time, we do want it to be fairly easy to migrate, obviously. Uh, I'm sure Mapbox is very happy about that. And uh, we do not set it as explicitly as a goal. This is the short answer. But we're not doing anything on purpose to break it. Cool. That makes sense.
That's it. Lunch is impor more important. Yeah, I, I get you. I, 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 Come on, I can, I can, I can make one of this. You have talked, yeah. You have talked about um, Vulcan and native and metal. Uh, what's the status of WebGL one versus WebGL two versus WebGPU? Oof, oof. So one, we want to move to WebGPU, especially once they finally implement it for Linux. I do not support anything that does not work on Linux. Personal pet peeve. Um, <clears throat> We do want to move there. Uh, it's a work in progress. I have heard feedback from Microsoft, for example, that has gazillion different devices that, I think it was Microsoft, uh, that uh, G, when they switched from GL1 to GL2, they, the rate of, the number of their apps that crashed has increased from 0.1% to 0.5% or something like that, significant enough for them to notice. Uh, so there's always, a goal to support newer tech and at the same time try to kind of have a backport. There's nothing, we try to coordinate every, all these efforts. Usually it's basically Microsoft or someone like that coming in and saying, how about we add this type of workaround for, to fall back to do this and that. Again, contributions welcome. That's as simple as that. We, we're not against supporting older platforms because we realize, especially in certain parts of the world, older devices are prevalent. We want to support those. 